So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, this is uh, Tagin Haile, and uh, this is our course, International Trade Theory and uh, Policy. So we are. Uh, We have about 11 students, so let's just, just start. So let me start with uh, some overview about our, our last week's uh, class. So last week we uh, talked about almost a kind of uh, introduction about international trade. We talked about some uh, uh, seven themes that reoccur in international trade. And uh, we have also talked about the difference and the relationship between international trade, international finance, and international economics. So uh, I hope everybody has got an introductory about this course, international trade theory and uh, policy. So this Today is our second chapter, which is uh, about world trade, an overview about world trade. So uh, in this uh, chapter, we will talk about why uh, we sell and buy, and we will talk about some benefits and costs of international trade, and we will also talk about uh, the motivations and some uh, challenges from the government policies to uh, pursue international trade. So within this, we will talk about uh, some model in international trade called the uh, uh, gravity model. And also we'll talk about um, the export and import of the United States. Um, and in that we will talk about the trade deficit and some factors that affect international trade uh, between uh, nations. Okay, so um, as, an, as an overview here, I would like to uh, mention some pointers from this chapter. So um, for example, if you take in 2013, the total uh, produced goods and services in the world uh, were uh, valued to be uh, more than 74 trillion dollars. And out of this 74 trillion dollars, 30 percent was uh, sold across uh, national borders. Okay, 30 percent is like maybe uh, about. Um, 30 trillion dollars is sold uh, worldwide, okay? So last week we have mentioned that almost um, all countries are involved in international trade. And now nowadays it has become that uh, being involved in international trade is not a matter of choice. Every country is uh, involved in international trade because of globalization and because of global uh, competition okay so uh, <clears throat> as I've said out of this 74 so this is a 2013 data but in 2019 it could be hundred trillions of dollars are produced of goods and services uh, in the world and out of this hundreds of trillions of dollars uh, of goods and services produced throughout the world, about 30% of these uh, goods and services were um, uh, sold to uh, outside of the countries or they were involved in export and import. So as I've said uh, throughout this chapter, we'll talk about why do we have to sell or why do we have to buy? 
and also we will, we will talk about the benefits and costs of international trade and also we'll talk about the, um, the motivations from the government and also some challenges from the government policies to uh, pursue international uh, trade and uh, so i will uh, just uh, mention the objectives of this course i mean this chapter so after completing this chapter so you will be able to describe how um, value of trade between any two countries depend on the size of these countries economy and explain the reasons for the relationship so the first objective of this chapter is for you to understand that there is a relationship between international trade and the size of economy of a country okay when we say that for example uh, last time we have said korea exports its products to the us and also imports some products from the us okay so um, this uh, gravity model that we'll talk about later uh, says that the relationship the international trade relationship is determined by the size of the economies of the nations so this means countries who have similar um, economies trade with each other okay so it looks like a country uh, countries with all, almost similar gdp they trade with each other so we'll talk about this how the size of country's economy is related to its international trade and the other objective the second objective of this chapter is discuss how distance and borders reduce trade so the other uh, uh, the, the other uh, theory in this uh, chapter is distance and borders reduce trade so this means as countries are very far apart from each other their international this international trade also is uh, decreasing with their distance okay so this means countries which are close with each other have more international trade than countries which are far from uh, each other okay and uh, the third uh, objective of this course is to describe how the share of international production that is traded has fluctuated over time and why there has been two uh, ages of globalization okay so uh, we'll talk about uh, the fact that uh, for example uh, us used to be the largest manufacturing products exporter in the world but now you can see that us is not exporting much uh, the manufactured products so us is now more based on service than manufacturing products and also we'll talk about the case in the developing countries where now they are dominating the export of manufactured goods okay and the last objective of this chapter is to explain how the mix of goods and services that are traded internationally has changed over time so what kind of goods and services are traded internationally and what so uh, what is uh, the factor that determines a product to be exportable product or not exportable product okay so we will talk about some traded and non-traded products okay so these are the four objectives of this chapter okay the first one is to uh, to describe how value of trade between any two countries depend on the size the second one is to understand distance and borders reduce international trade the third one is to understand the second age or the 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 two ages of globalization and the fourth one is to know how uh, this mix of goods and services has changed in international trade okay so in the preview this are the patterns so i have said the uh, the pattern of international trade has been changing so us uh, trade partners are the largest trading partners of the us united states are uh, as you know canada mexico and also china are this these are the three largest trading partners of united states 
okay? Canada, Mexico, and China. So you, you can easily understand why Canada and Mexico, because there is a free trade agreement between the US, Canada, and Mexico, which we call NAFTA, right? So NAFTA has contributed a lot for being the largest, uh, for, being, for these three countries to be the largest trading partners, okay? But China has came into light in 2015. So by now, China has dominated the largest import and export um, of goods and services from the United States, okay? And the second uh, about the preview is the gravity model. So this gravity model tries to explain that international trade and the size of the economy of a country are related. Size of a country's economy is the GDP, okay? Because GDP is uh, how we measure the economy of a country. So countries with um, uh, high GDPs trade with each other. So we'll talk about how, and there is also a simple formula that is used to explain the gravity model. The other in the gravity model is uh, distance. Uh, distance, as we have said, is a barrier to international trade. Border is a barrier to international trade. And there are also others. For example, cultural affinities could also be barriers to international trade. So uh, those countries who have similar culture or those who have a long-term relationship can have a higher international trade values as compared to countries with whom they have uh, less uh, cultural affinities, okay? And the other is globalization then and now. So the changing composition of trade, as I've said, uh, manufacturing product is used to dominate the, the international trade, but now services are coming to light. So uh, the amount of services exported uh, and imported has been increasing. So service export is called service outsourcing, okay? Service outsourcing is service export, okay? So these are just like uh, the previews. Let's, uh, so the, 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 the first uh, 15 to 20 slides are more of uh, trade in the US, okay? So um, it's just for you to understand the, uh, the concept of trade def deficit, okay, and trade surplus. So uh, the first 20 uh, slides will be very simple to understand. So we'll go through that. Then after uh, slide number 20, 21, then we'll talk about the main points in this in this chapter. Okay. So uh, we have also um, let's talk about the world trade pa uh, the world trade uh, patterns. So. Um, we have also talked about this, about the Great uh, Recession in 2008 and 2009. And we have said that uh, during this time, international trade has hugely been affected because of the economic recession. Then uh, world GDP growth tended to be around three to 4%. And the growth in world merchandise trade tended to be around six to 8%. So that was its lowest because of the Great Recession or what you call the economic recession in 2008-2009, okay? So both world GDPs and trade uh, contracted uh, sharply in 2009. Then actually after 2009, uh, 2010 was good, then it became uh, improving, okay? So 2012 to 2016, growth in, in world GDP and growth in trade have uh, been uh, slow relative to the historical uh, average. Okay, so you can see this uh, this uh, figure, for example. This is a merchandise trade and GDP growth. This starting from 2005 to 2015. Okay, so you can see here that uh, in 2008, 2009, so that's like after 2008, the 2008 economy shows that there was a great uh, decrease in uh, merchandise trade uh, volume uh, growth. Okay, so after that, 2000 was very good, then uh, 11 was a little bit uh, lower, then 
uh, it uh, become lower, but the average, as you can see, the broken lines here represent the average trade and uh, of, uh, I mean, this is average trade merchandise and this is a GDP, okay? So what is GDP actually, uh, let me explain that. The economy of a country is measured by its GDP. So GDP means gross domestic product, right? So uh, it's like a price tag of an output of a country, okay? So uh, let me give you an example. We say that a manufacturing company produces products, right? And exports these products to other countries. So this manufacturing product, a manufacturing company is just one uh, uh, portion, okay? Within a country, okay? But if when we consider the whole country's output, then it is called the GDP. It's measured by GDP. So GDP is the summation of consumers' consumption plus investment, okay? Capital investment plus government spending plus the net export. Okay, these four are things that uh, determine GDP, okay? Consumers' consumption, investment, capital investment. Third one is uh, government spending. And fourth one is net export. So net export means export minus import, okay? So sometimes net export might be negative when a country has uh, a negative uh, trade balance or uh, when a country has a trade deficit, okay? So GDP is a commonly used measure of an economy of a country, okay? So, um, so when we say the economy of a country, then we, will talk, we are talking about GDP because that is a common measure. There is another one which is called GDP per capita, which is when you divide the GDP with the number of population, okay? But here, since GDP is a commonly accepted measure of an economy of a country, so we are talking about GDP, gro gross domestic product, okay? So, uh, who trades with whom? So more than, as I've said, 30% of world output in sold uh, goods and services across national borders. Uh, so more than 30% of output is uh, sold across national borders, right? Uh, for example, when we take 2013's data, about $74 trillion value of goods were produced. Out of this $74 trillion, 30% of this goods and products were sold across national borders, okay? So this is just to show you that how international trade has um, a great portion of production in, in, in the world, okay? So the largest, five largest trading partners with the US in 2002-12 were Canada, China, Mexico, Japan, and Germany, right? So this is in 2012, okay? So if you check, actually, so in 2015, China, is, China was the number one. Number one trading, trading partner of the US, okay? But if you check the, the 2090s or 2080s, I mean 2020s uh, data from the internet, you can find that China is number one, Mexico is number two, Japan is number three, Germany is number four, Vietnam is number five, Ireland is number six, Italy is number seven, and Canada is number eight. Okay, so the, the, the current data shows that Canada is number eight largest trading partner with the US. Number one is China. So when we say the largest trading partner, we mean the U.S. has the largest import and export with these countries, right? So as we've said, because of the NAFTA, which is a North American free trade agreement between Mexico, Canada, and the U.S., they used to have the largest, they used to be the largest trading partners, but now China is taking the lead, right? So. Chinese um, uh, export and import 
with the US is the largest as compared to all the other countries in the world. Okay, so the largest 15 trading partners with the US accounted for 69% of the value of the US trade in 2012. Okay, so this is just to show you how the GDP or the economy of a, a, a country is very dependent on its international trade. Okay, so for example, if you take Coca Cola, Coca Cola is an international uh, company, right? It's a multinational corporation. So more than 70% of the profit or earnings of Coca Cola come from outside or from other countries. More than 90% of Japanese products are sold to um, across the border or to other countries, okay? More than 94% of Germany's products are sold to the international community, right? Or to uh, across the national borders, okay? So this is just to show you that how like six, 69 or more than 69% of the US value of trade in 2012 is with the 15 largest trading partners, which means this international trade takes the huge part in the economy of a country, okay? <clears throat> so you can take a look at this, okay? So this is um, a data, data from 2012, right? The US and its major trading partners, okay? So this shows that Canada is number one, China used to be number two, Mexico, Japan, Germany, like that. But as I have said, the 2020 data shows that China is number one, Mexico is number two, and Japan is number three, okay? So Canada has lost its position from being uh, the largest trading partner with the US and uh, Canada is now the number eight trading partner of the US, okay? So you can see the amount of money here. On the excess axis is the total trade in billions. So close to $650 billion trade is between Canada and the US, okay? So if you take here, Italy used to have about 50 billion uh, uh, dollars of trade with, with the US. But in 2020, Italy is number seven, which is uh, more, much more improved than um, it was before, okay? So, and uh, you can see this is the data from 2015. So as we've said, China took the lead, okay, in 2015. 2014 with Canada, okay? So from 2015 onward, the highest trading partner, the largest trading partner with the US is China, okay? So this shows the different colors, shows the number of the, the, the years, and this shows the countries. For example, uh, this is the black one is 2015. So Japan used to have almost $200 uh, billion of trade with the US, okay? <clears throat> so from now to uh, until 20 something slides, we'll show the trade balance uh, between um, US and its trading partners, okay? So this is the data from 2008, okay? So you can see that the US has an import of goods from Canada, which is worth $335 billion but the export of the US to Canada is $222 billion, okay? So last week, we said that if the import is greater than the export, then we say there is a trade deficit, okay? And we've said if the export is larger than the import, there is a trade surplus. Right. So now you can see that trade between Canada and the U.S. is negative because the U.S. imports more goods from Canada than it exports because the import is much more higher than 
the export, okay? That is why we have a negative trade balance here, okay? So when we have higher importers and less export, then we have a negative trade balance, right? And when we have higher export and less import, then we have a positive trade balance, okay? And you know the fact that a negative trade balance is not good for a country. A country is better off when it has a positive trade balance, right? So here, China, with China is very big, right? You can see that uh, the US imported $338 billion of goods and services from China, but exports only 67, which resulted in a trade balance, a negative trade balance of $270 billion. And the total volume of trade is this much, okay? That's just uh, adding the import and the export, okay? So here, 335, 222, 557 billion dollars volume of trade, right? So trade volume is just the uh, submission of both the import and the export, okay? So you can see Japan, 139 import from Japan, 61 billion dollars exports to Japan, which is again negative, okay? So you can see the trade balance, so all the trade balance in 2008, the US has with its major trading partners was negative, right? So you can see again, 2009, again, all negative. But specifically, the negative trade balance with China is the highest, okay? So later on, I will explain why the Chinese and United States are having a trade war, because you can see the difference here. Okay, and let's go 2010. You can see here the highest trade balance, negative trade balance the US has is with China again, because US imports $364 billion from the US, but exports only 86, negative trade balance. Okay, 2011, again, negative trade balance, the highest. 2012, negative trade balance, again, the highest. 13, the same thing. 14, the same thing, okay? But in, in 15, 2015, as we have said, China became the highest trading partner, the largest trading partner with the US, okay? It's just, you can see, the import and export between Canada and the US was 660 in 2014. So it was until 2015, uh, Canada used to have the highest trade volume with the US, but in 2015, the trade volume between China and the US is greater than the trade volume between Canada and the US. But also, the negative trade balance was very high, okay? So you can see, this is the trade patterns of the US, okay? So here, this is the years on the x-axis, and this is the trade balance, amount of uh, dollars in billions, okay? So you can see, 1960s, it was okay, okay? It was not negative, it was zero, which means the import and the export was balanced, okay? But you can see, it became, uh, it, it was declining, but uh, it came back again in 19, around 1998, then again dropped, then it dropped very badly in 2014, it became uh, a negative, I mean, the biggest uh, trade uh, uh, balance, negative trade balance, okay? And 2008 and 2009, you already know what happened, then 2010, it was good. So this is up to 2020, uh, 2015, okay? So you can see that the US has a negative trade balance for more than uh, 50 years, okay? So you might ask, if this is true and US is having a negative trade balance for a long time, then why is the economy of 
uh, the US the greatest economy in the world, okay? Because we say the biggest economy in the world is the US, then followed by China, right? So where is this coming from? So it is coming from other investments, okay? So this is just the important export, okay? But US has the highest foreign direct investment in Europe and other parts of the world, okay? So even though US has a negative trade balance, US has a positive balance of payment because US has the highest foreign direct investment uh, in other countries. So this trade balance is compensated by the foreign direct investment. That's why the US economy is the largest economy in the world. But uh, you can see the import and the export was much, much uh, less as compared to the other investments, okay? And I would, I would like also to point out that uh, even though when you compare the goods and services trade of the US, US trade is more service than goods. Okay, but still uh, it has a negative uh, trade balance. Okay. Okay, so the US trade patterns, we're still talking about US trade patterns. The US trade was essentially balanced up until 1976. So as we have seen from the, from the graph here, up until 1976, it's around here, it was okay. It was close to zero. It was not negative, right? It was negative, but close uh, to zero. But after 1976, then it was moderately uh, negative from 19, 1977 to 1997. But then, then there was a large deficit from 1998, okay? So around here, 1998, um, which is here, okay? So from here, it has uh, dramatically uh, was uh, uh, largely in, in deficit, okay, from 1998 to uh, 2008, okay. So the Great Recession uh, shrunk the U.S. importers by more than U.S. exporters. Well, so U.S. importers were affected much because of the recession than its exports. And you know why? Uh, uh, why import has shrunk? Because in the economic recession, people do not have money to invest, right? So the amounts they used to buy from other countries has decreased, okay? Um, but um, exporters were not affected as importers because export, export means it is other people or other uh, uh, customers who are buying your goods and services, right? So the economic recession hit the U.S. very much as compared to other countries, right? That's why the imports were affected much more than the exports, okay? So trade deficits uh, was, uh, uh, it shrunk in 2009, and it was worsened a bit since then, but not nearly as uh, large as it was in 2006 to 2008, okay? So year to date, 2016 to November, U.S. exporters down by 4%, U.S. importers uh, down by 3%. So both imports and exporters uh, were uh, uh, low in 2025, I mean 2015, okay? So uh, I only have one minute to finish this. Um, I'll just give you... Um, a five minute break, okay? Then we will continue uh, from here, okay? So just, I'll be back after five minutes with a new uh, meeting ID and password, okay?